You are tuned in to your weekly Sunday morning word broadcast, Rama Power, with Reverend Ni nee Bernard Adiakwa, Senior Pastor of Powerhouse Ministries International, a program designed to improve your understanding into the Word of God, bring you practical solutions, and empower you to rise above life's daily challenges. Stay tuned. Hello, precious one. We wish to extend a warm invitation to you to join us for any of our Sunday services at the PMI King's Temple. Our services are specially designed to specifically meet your needs and draw you closer to have fellowship with God in His presence. You are welcome to join us in person at 6.15 a.m. for the morning glory service at 7.30 a.m. for the second service, which is also streamed live across all our social media platforms, and at 9.45 a.m. for the third service. We also wish to invite you to join us for the Living Mana, our weekday Bible teaching service, which comes off every Tuesday at 6 p.m. and Thursday at 6.30 p.m. in person and online, respectively. On Fridays, we gather before our Father's altar at 6 p.m., to pray and seek his faith for divine encounters. The king has a special place for you. Don't come alone. You surely will be blessed by the word of God. In Jesus' name, God richly bless you. Today, I want to continue what I began on the pursuit of excellence, and I want to share about how to cultivate the spirit of excellence. How to cultivate the spirit of excellence. Can I remind you quickly of the four things God wants us to do to influence the world today as salt, as the light of the world, as the yeast, and then also as a good example. Our key instructions are to honor the Lord with our service. Number two, to honor the Lord with our substance and with the first fruits of all our increase. Number three, keep the Sabbath and keep it honorable. We are excited that it's another Sunday and we can gather in the presence of the Lord. And number four, improve your smell. Or your attitude. Last week we spoke about the pursuit of excellence. And at the core of every spirit of excellence. Is the heart of service. To serve. To meet the needs of people. We serve honorably. We will serve honorably some more. And we will serve honorably all the time. If anybody wants to be great amongst you. Let him be your servant. We have also seen that God is no respecter of persons. But that in every nation. He that feareth him and worketh righteousness is accepted with him. What this means is that the playing field has been leveled. Every one of us has the same opportunity to do well. It doesn't matter whether you are in the UK. It doesn't matter whether you are in Choco. It doesn't matter whether you are in Nima. You can do well. Lift up your hand and say, I shall do well. So the world is no longer discriminating based on your sex, your location, your background, the world accepts excellence. And it doesn't matter who you are. If you choose to be excellent, the world will take notice of you. There are footballers like Michael Asian who come from a place like Ghana. And on the world stage, they become the best midfielder. Uh, Drogba, you have Samuel Eto. They are excellent players. And it no longer matters which country they come from or where they find themselves. Once you are excellent, the top clubs, Barcelona, Chelsea, Manchester United, they all want you because they all want an excellent player. We have also established the fact that righteousness exalteth a nation. What we learn is that excellence is a voice of life because it creates trust. You trust a people of excellence, people who pay attention to details and they do not excuse recklessness. Wherever you find yourself, whether you are in slavery, like Daniel or Joseph, excellence will bring you out of obscurity into prominence. Today, I want us to read Daniel chapter 5, verses 11 and 12, and begin to understand how to cultivate excellence. Say with me, I shall be excellent. Okay, so let's read Daniel chapter 5, verse 11 and 12. One, two, go. There is a man in thy kingdom in whom is the spirit of the holy gods. And in the days of thy father, light and understanding and wisdom, like the wisdom of the gods, was found in him. Whom the king Nebuchadnezzar, thy father, the king, 
I say thy father made master of the magicians, astrologers, Chaldeans, and soothsayers. Verse 12. For as much as an excellent spirit and knowledge and understanding, interpreting of dreams and showing of hard sentences and dissolving of doubts were found in the same Daniel whom the king named Belteshazzar. Now let Daniel be called and he will show the interpretation. Let's do a little bit of background. King Nebuchadnezzar was faced with a major problem, something he had never experienced before. And he had no idea how he was going to solve the problem. The first thing I need you to understand is that there are problems that are beyond every person. So, for example, if I've studied mathematics, it doesn't mean I can solve every problem in the world because I studied only mathematics. If I studied computer science and I face a problem that I don't know, it doesn't mean that that problem cannot be solved. All it means is that I, as a person, cannot solve that problem. Therefore, it is wrong for me, when I cannot solve a problem, to assume that that problem can never be solved. Because what I cannot solve, another person can solve or may have the ability to solve it. So the fact that I cannot solve a problem must not make me conclude that there is no solution to that problem. That is one of the things we should all learn. What many people do, unfortunately, is that when they face a problem they cannot solve, the easy way out is to say that the problem is spiritual just because they can't solve it. And once you begin to say things like that, you stop yourself from pursuing for a solution. Because what you're actually saying is that this problem is beyond human beings. Now listen, and listen carefully. When God made man in his own image and in his likeness, it meant that everything God can do, he has placed the same capacity in man. So for you to say you cannot solve that problem or any human being cannot solve that problem is actually to limit God. You've got to understand how God works. Every solution or every problem in the world, there is a solution to the problem. There is nothing too difficult that cannot be solved. Even if we don't have the solution immediately, in a matter of time, we will solve it. Okay? And this is the mindset all of us must have. It doesn't matter what the problem is today. I may not have the solution immediately, but this problem can be solved. And if you look in the world, every problem that has faced us has been solved by another man. Every problem. Just think of it carefully. So let us not be in a hurry to conclude that this problem cannot be solved. So in this example we are going to be looking at, we are going to see what solves problems how God expects us to solve problems and what our attitude to problems must be. So when Nebuchadnezzar had a problem, they looked amongst them, the Chaldeans, the magicians, the soothsayers, the astrologers. And they said, we are the people who live in Babylon. This problem we cannot solve. But there is a man in whom he has knowledge that is superior to us. So they are saying that this problem is above us, but there is another human being who has superior knowledge than us. And they said something. They said that this man has knowledge that is hidden from a lot of people. It is like the knowledge of the gods because they assume that the gods are wiser and have more knowledge to secret things that are happening on the earth. So they compared this man to having superior knowledge. And they said in verse 12, for as much as an excellent spirit. Somebody say excellent spirit. Now they are going to define the components of an excellent spirit. And they say an excellent spirit. Knowledge, understanding, interpreting of dreams, and showing of hard sentences, and dissolving of doubts were found in the same Daniel. And they say call this man. And we are confident that he will show us the interpretation. So even though a group of people couldn't solve the problem, they recognized another person who has superior knowledge and understanding who they know that this same man will solve the problems. Now remember, even though they were acknowledging that they were gods, they didn't go to the gods. They came to a man called Daniel. Why? Because they said this man has excellent spirit. So anybody who has an excellent spirit, I want to show you four things you can do. But before we talk about that, let me give you a 
bit of a background of the story of Daniel. Daniel is dealing with a very bad situation. He's been taken from where he was born and sent into another country. When Jehoiakim, the king of Judah, was reigning, he was overthrown by King Nebuchadnezzar of Babylon. Daniel was taken by the king, and the king demanded that some of those Israelites, slaves, who were competent enough should be trained to stand in his palace. Every time a king went to battle and won the battle, he would take the bare spoils from the defeated king. And so King Nebuchadnezzar took the people who had the best potential to be trained to be part of his kingdom. So Daniel has been captured. He's been taken away from his home. And he's been placed in a secular, idol-worshipping culture of Babylon. Even his name has been changed from Daniel to Belteshazzar. And he was forced to speak the language of the Chaldean instead of his native Hebrew language. Even his diet had been changed from that which he was used to into something foreign. And worst of all, they wanted to even change his beliefs in the one true God to another God. So if you look at Daniel, he had a lot of things to be angry and frustrated about. You are a young man. You didn't have anything to do with the war. But some way, somehow, there's a battle and there's a war and your country lost and you found yourself in a strange country. And in the strange country, the king has changed your name. You used to be called Daniel. Now he's calling you by the name of his gods. In that country, you are now a slave. Somebody has to tell you when to sleep. Somebody has to tell you when to wake up. Somebody has to tell you how to dress. Everything about you has been changed. Even the food you have to eat. Maybe you are used to eating kenke and banku. Now they are changing the food into something that when you look at, you are not sure whether you should eat it or not. A lot of things were negative about Daniel. So he had a lot of reasons to cultivate and culture a bad attitude, born out of resentment. But in spite of all these situations, Daniel still maintained a certain attitude. He was flawless in his character. He was still committed to serving his God. And he caught the eye of Asphenas and the king and found favor because he had an excellent spirit. Sometimes we all find ourselves in positions and in situations we don't understand that makes us angry. Through no fault of ours, we find ourselves we've been relocated and we are serving under a king we don't like. A lot of cultures and a lot of things don't seem to go well. Our food has been changed. Our clothing has been changed. And we're asking ourselves, what is this? What is this? Why me? And the natural inclination is for you to get angry, very angry. And because of that, you are a slave. But the worst thing also is that you have a bad attitude, isn't it? So you find somebody who is in a place he doesn't like. And the attitude is bad, so bad because he's angry. And because of that, he can't grow beyond his pain. He's angry that his father traveled. He's angry that his mother died early. He's angry that he went to a school that didn't have good teachers. You are angry with life. And so because of that, you are going through life angry and you freeze yourself even as a slave. Instead of growing up, instead of progressing your life, you are a slave and unfortunately, because of your attitude, you will die a slave. That is a very sad thing. Very, very sad thing. But you find something about Daniel that in spite of the fact that he was in slavery, he had an excellent attitude. He has decided that even though I don't like what I'm going through, even though what I'm going through is not the best situation, even though I'm in a position I don't like, I will still not allow this thing to take me away from my God and my core beliefs. I will still be excellent. I won't let the people make me mediocre. I won't let them reduce me to becoming like them. I'm going to be excellent. You see, this is the manifestation of God's character. That you do not change based on your location. You do not change based on your circumstances. You will hold on to certain cardinal things that are true. I believe in hard work. I pray that every one of us will have foundations that will stand. I believe in honesty. I believe in faithfulness. I believe in truth. I believe in serving. There are some things about you that no matter where you go, they will be you. So I work hard. I may not like my boss, but I won't let him destroy my character of hard work. I don't like the environment I am in, but I won't let it destroy my character of honesty. I will still work hard. I will be honest. I'll be faithful. I'll be truthful. I want to ask you, what are the pillars of your life? 
that you will not compromise on. For which no matter what, that is you. This is me. I won't change. When I was growing up, I had to make certain major decisions of what I wanted to be and how I wanted to be identified. And I pray for all of you that you will also have certain pillars. For example, truthfulness, loving, faithful. You see, there are some things that no matter who you are, it must be you, that I'm honest. What are the things that will characterize you? What are the things that can be said about you that if you are in Ghana or you are in Togo or you are in America, you will still maintain that consistency? There was something about the way Daniel behaved that distinguished him from everyone else. Whether he was a slave or whether he had been promoted as an advisor to the king. Daniel was diligent, he was detailed, he was dependable in his work. I believe that if you gave Daniel a vacuum cleaner to clean the rug, he wouldn't just vacuum the rug, he would also vacuum the sofa and get in between the cracks just to make sure that everything around him was excellent. Daniel was a pioneer and a leader of excellence, just like Joseph. He served all his masters faithfully and consistently and was promoted at every job he had. When he was serving a king, he served like he himself was a king. When he was serving in the palace, he served like he owned the palace. When he was serving in the prison, he served like the prison was his. It is time for all of us to start serving like you own where you serve. And I'll give you a little example. In a certain part of the world, when people are employed, they work very well. In another part of the world, when people are employed, the mentality is that, so right from day one when you employ a certain group of people, their attitude is that, as for me, I'll just try and work. At the end of the month, I'll collect my salary. After all, it's not my father's job. So you are lazy, you are reckless, you don't work truthfully. Why? Because you have an idea that, now, anybody who works like that, and remember, God is no respecter of persons. Anybody who has that mindset that this is not my job, after I'm just, you see, you detach yourself from what you are doing, you will become poor. And many Africans are like that. Many. And sometimes I wonder why some people think that way. Somebody has started a job. You are finished school, you are looking for a job. And then you have this mindset that, and so you go with an attitude. And you are wondering why you don't prosper. You are wondering why you don't do well. Because there are foundations of work. If you don't apply them, you will not do well. Hard work, disciplined work, righteous work is godly. You've got to learn to sweep the floor of the church like the church is yours. In fact, the Bible says that he that is not faithful in that which is another man's, how will he have that which is own? So one of the requirements for you to be able to grow into that which is your own, is that when you are working for somebody, you work like it is your own. So when Joseph is working for Potiphar, he works like it is his own. Do you think if somebody bought you a car and you are driving the car like it was your own, the person will sack you. But if after one week, what the person has to use to repair the car is more than what you are paid at the end of the month, there's a problem. There's a major problem. So you've got to think carefully. Don't allow the environment to dictate to you let us learn to work with a spirit of excellence because it is a divine requirement. We must work with a spirit of excellence because our work must please God. And even if human beings are not satisfied, God whom we please will promote us. So when you have to work, don't ever think that it is the work of man. It wasn't a human being who invented work. So when you work well, beyond what you are paid at the end of the month, God kicks in. And this is what a lot of Africans must learn. So you find an African who travels out of the country. He works so hard. And you ask yourself, he's promoted and he becomes the best. And then that same Africa comes to Ghana. And it's as if when he gets to the airport, they remove his brain. And give him an African brain. And immediately he gets into the airport and the Ghana air hits him. He takes on another attitude. He's different. He begins to work shoddily. He begins to work dishonestly. He begins to work... Anyhow, yet this same person will not work like that when he's in China or will not work like that when he's in Dubai or will not work like that when he's in America. If we decide to do the same things here in Ghana, you'll be surprised at how much we'll prosper. And as a church, I want to encourage you. Let God be God in China or Dubai or in Ghana or in Togo or in everywhere. God is no respecter of persons. 
that when you get a job, you will work to please God. You will work with the standards of God, with a spirit of excellence. Daniel was diligent and also determined in his relationship with God. There was a certain known consistency about his relationship with God. He didn't just pray once a day. He didn't just pray twice a day. But he prayed so regularly, three times every day, that even everybody could say that, as for this guy at this time, this is where he'll be and this is what he'll be doing. Can we talk about you in those terms? Your consistency in your devotion to God. I can't imagine being in Daniel's shoes. Somebody who has been taken from his home and family and thrown into enemy's lands to be trained to be one of them. Somebody who's going to learn their literature, it's their food. His name has changed. What difficult circumstance. And I'm sure many people will become angry and they'll become discouraged. But Daniel was set apart from the rest because of what was in him. What was in him? An excellent spirit. Say with me, I have an excellent spirit. So when you look at Daniel, it wasn't just in his outward looks. It wasn't just in his educational qualification. There was something about him. And I've shown you that excellence is not just academic. It also has to deal with your attitudes. Your attitudes. In fact, excellence is 99% attitudes and 1% ability. So when you are excellent, your attitudes are very, very good. Sometimes you have people who are able, but they have a bad attitude and they don't go far. But an excellent spirit has an attitude that everything I do is excellent about me. And last week, we defined excellence in four major ways. Number one, excellence is an innate desire. It means it is something within you. It is not something from outside. Listen, church, nobody can make you excellent. You can only become excellent by yourself. If you don't want to be excellent, no matter what resources are given to you, you'll waste them. If you want to be average, if you say, oh, as for me, I just want to pass. As for me, I just want to be average. No matter what they buy for you, no matter how much money is given to you, you won't do well. But if you yourself, you say, I want to be excellent. I want to be above the average. I don't want to be like my community. I don't want to be like the place where I'm coming from. Maybe I come from a slum area. Everybody does it like that. But I want to be excellent. You must desire it. I don't want to be like an average Ghanaian. I want to be excellent because there's a better life than being average. It is something you desire. If you don't want it, you can pray and anything that you want will be given to you, you'll spoil it. If we buy you the best broom and you don't want to sweep well, nobody can force you. If we buy you the best textbooks and you don't want to learn, nobody can force you. So the first thing about excellence is that it is something you must want. I want it. I want to be excellent. I don't want to be average. I don't want to be mediocre. I don't want to be satisfactory. I want to be excellent. I don't want to be an average instrumentalist. You see, when you have that, you will understand why you will wake up early in the morning when everybody's asleep and still go around practicing because I don't want to be average footballer. I want to be an excellent footballer. You will understand why everybody has closed. You are still in the gym training or you are still working hard after everybody has left. You are working hard because you want to be excellent. You will understand why everybody's asleep. You wake up in the night and you are still learning because you don't want to be average. There's something within you that motivates you. So when you find somebody who is complaining, eh, I don't have this, I don't have that. You see, find out what the person is doing for himself. Don't just let what people say to you move you. There are people who don't have what you have. They will even borrow to go to school. There are people who have less what you have, but because they want to pass an exam, they will struggle, no food, and go to a school where the teachers are not good and still learn and pass physics and chemistry and biology. You see, when you have an excellent spirit, where you are coming from, because something within you will drive you. And sometimes, people who come from very good families, they have an entitlement. They, oh, and as for me, my father has money. So you go to school, you just go and pass. You must be aggressive. I don't want to be an average seamstress. I don't want to be an average hairdresser. I don't want to be an average tailor. I don't want to be an average footballer. When there is a football match and Lionel Messi is playing, you realize that they don't substitute him because he's not average. When Abedi Pele is playing, they don't substitute him because it's not average. If you are average, it means that what you do, another person can easily do. It means that if you move from where you are, you will lose your customers because they won't come to you. There is somebody who can easily do what you are doing for them. But if you are excellent, 
you find out that even if you locate somewhere far, they will come and look for you because they don't want to lose you. So don't complain about life because the playing field has been leveled. God is no respect of persons. Eh, as for us, we are located in Choco. Choco is hard because we are in Choco. That is why a lot of people don't come to church. Who told you? We don't give ourselves that excuse. Do you know where people come from to come to church? So you can say, oh, eh, me, in shop, eh, 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 in choco, eh, your melee, me. Listen, if you are an excellent watch seller, they will come from far because everybody wants excellence. So instead of complaining, drive yourself into excellence. Go an extra mile. Do what other people are not ready to do and do it excellently. So last week we defined excellence as number one, reaching beyond the mark. Number two, delivering superior quality. Number three, producing works of distinction. And number four, constantly upgrading and refining. In Daniel, it says that for as much as an excellent spirit, an excellent spirit, something was driving him. He was a slave, yet he was excellent. He was promoted into the palace and he still became excellent. What? The guy is amazing. Because you think that when you are a slave, maybe you entered as a messenger and you are made a manager, the managers will know more than you. But when he became a manager, he said, no, I'll be more excellent than even the managers. And so he trained himself. He began to do things that made him better than the managers. Every position he was occupying, the excellent spirit drove him. We'll continue next week. Put your hands together for the Lord. Hello, precious one. We wish to extend a warm invitation to you to join us for any of our Sunday services at the PMI King's Temple. Our services are specially designed to specifically meet your needs and draw you closer to have fellowship with God in His presence. You are welcome to join us in person at 6.15 a.m. for the morning glory service, at 7.30 a.m. for the second service, which is also streamed live across all our social media platforms, and at 9.45 a.m. for the third service. We also wish to invite you to join us for the Living Manna, a weekday Bible teaching service which comes off every Tuesday at 6 p.m. and Thursday at 6.30 p.m. in person and online respectively. On Fridays, we gather before our Father's altar at 6 p.m. to pray and seek His faith for divine encounters. The King has a special place for you. Don't come alone. You surely will be blessed by the word of God in Jesus' name. God richly bless you. Thank you for listening to Rhema Power with Reverend Me Bernard Adiakwa. We hope you've been blessed. For further information, contact 0303-931-841. Tune in next week for another insightful teaching on Rhema Power. Shine up